Welcome back to AZ900 Journey Part 8. In this episode, we're tackling real exam questions that will get you closer to your Azure certification and that 85K plus cloud career. Each question comes with detailed explanations and real world examples to make these concepts stick. Let's dive in. Question 41. A company has a set of virtual machines defined in Azure. One of the machines was down due to issues with the underlying Azure infrastructure. The server was down for an extended period of time and breached the standard SLA defined by Microsoft. How will Microsoft reimburse the downtime cost? This question tests your knowledge of how Microsoft compensates customers when Azure services fail to meet their SLA commitments. Think about it. If Azure promises 99.9% .9 uptime, but your VM is down for too long, how does Microsoft make it right? The options are, a, by directly sending money to the customer's bank account. B, by spinning up another virtual machine free of cost for the client. C, by providing service credits to the customer. D, by providing a service free of cost to use for a specific duration of time. Imagine your internet provider promises 99% uptime, but your connection is down for days. They don't mail you cash. Instead, they credit your next bill. Azure works the same way. When they breach their SLA, you get service credits applied to your Azure account for future usage, not actual money back. Correct answer, C, by providing service credits to the customer. When Microsoft Azure fails to meet the uptime percentage guaranteed in their SLA, they compensate customers through service credits, not direct monetary refunds. These credits are calculated as a percentage of your monthly service fees for the affected Azure service and are applied to your Azure account for future use. Here's how it works in practice. Let's say your virtual machine has a 99.99% .99 uptime SLA, but due to Azure infrastructure issues, your uptime drops to 98%. Microsoft will credit you a percentage of that month's VM charges, typically 10 to 25%, depending on how far below the SLA you fell. For VM specifically, if uptime falls below 95%, you can receive up to 100% service credits of your monthly fees. You must submit a claim through a support ticket with the Service Health Outage Incident Identifier by the end of the following calendar month to receive these credits. Why the other options are wrong. A. Direct bank transfer. Microsoft never sends actual money to your bank account for SLA breaches. Service credits are the sole form of compensation across all Azure SLAs. B. Free VM. They don't spin up free resources as compensation. Credits are percentage based on what you already paid, not new free services. D. Free service for duration. This isn't how it works. You get account credits based on a percentage calculation, not unlimited free access to services for a set time period. Quick takeaway. Azure SLA breaches equals service credits on your account. It's like getting a credit on your electricity bill when there's a power outage, not cash in hand. To get the free PDF or mock test, comment PDF or mock or both, I will share the downloadable link within the next 24 hours. Question 42. A company is planning on deploying Azure resources to a resource group, but the resources would belong to different locations. Can you have resources that belong to the same resource group but be in multiple locations? This question is testing whether you understand what an Azure resource group actually is. Is it tied to one physical location or is it just a logical container? The key here is knowing that resources and resource groups don't have to match locations. The options are A, yes, B, no. Think of a resource group like a folder on your computer. Just because the folder is on your C drive doesn't mean you can't create shortcuts to files located on different drives, right? Similarly, a resource group in East US can absolutely hold a virtual machine in West Europe and a storage account in Southeast Asia, all in the same group. Correct answer, A, yes, absolutely yes. Resources in the same resource group can be spread across multiple Azure regions. A resource group is simply a logical container that helps you organize and manage related Azure resources together. It's not a physical boundary. Here's what actually happens. When you create a resource group, you do specify a location, like central US, but that location only determines where the metadata about the resource group is stored. Things like resource tags, access controls, deployment history, and organizational information. The actual resources inside that group can live anywhere in the world. For example, you could have a resource group located in West US that contains an app service in West Europe, 
an Azure SQL database in Southeast Asia, and a storage account in Australia East. This is a completely valid and common setup. Why would you do this? Different reasons. Maybe certain Azure services aren't available in all regions, or you want resources closer to your global users for better performance, or you have compliance requirements for data residency in specific countries. One small thing to watch. If the region hosting your resource group's metadata goes down, like an outage in West US, you won't be able to create new resources in that group until it's back online. But your existing resources in other regions will keep running just fine. Quick takeaway. Resource groups equals logical organization tool. Resources inside equals can be anywhere globally. Think filing cabinet, one location. Holding documents about offices worldwide, many locations. If this video is helping you, support us by hitting the like button. And don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. Question 43. A company is planning on using their Azure free account for hosting production-based resources. Solution. You use the Azure free account to host production-based resources. Does this meet the goal? This question is testing whether Microsoft technically allows or blocks you from running production workloads on an Azure free account. It's asking, is there any policy or restriction that prevents production usage, or is it technically possible? The options are A, yes, B, no. Think of it like using a free trial gym membership. The gym doesn't stop you from doing serious training during your trial. You're just limited by time and access to certain premium equipment. Similarly, Azure Free Account doesn't have a production blocker, but you'll hit resource limits, quotas, and face potential charges if you exceed the free tier allocations. Correct answer A, yes. Yes, technically you can use an Azure Free Account to host production resources. Microsoft doesn't enforce any policy restrictions that prevent production workloads. Here's what you need to understand. An Azure free account gives you $200 credit for the first 30 days, plus access to limited quantities of free services for 12 months, like 750 hours of B1S virtual machines, five gigabytes of blob storage, 250 gigabytes of Azure SQL database, etc. There's no technical barrier or checkbox that says production use not allowed. You can deploy whatever resources you need within these limits. However, and this is the big catch, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Here's why it's risky for production. Limited resources. Once you exceed free tier limits, like going over 750 VM hours or 5 gigabyte storage, you automatically get billed at standard pay-as-you-go rates. There are no hard stops. Azure just starts charging you. No SLA guarantees. Free tier services don't come with the same uptime commitments as paid production grade services. If your production app goes down, you won't have the same support or compensation options. Hidden costs. Things like diagnostic logs, IP addresses, managed disks, and outbound data transfer can trigger charges even when using free VMs. Many users get surprise bills because dependent resources aren't included in the free tier. Why the answer is technically yes. The question asks, does this meet the goal? Meaning, can you technically do it? The answer is yes. You can deploy and run production resources. Microsoft won't stop you. But in the real world, most companies upgrade to a pay-as-you-go subscription for production because of better reliability, support, and cost predictability. Quick takeaway. Azure free account for production equals technically possible, but practically risky. It's like using a learner's permit to drive cross-country. Not illegal but definitely not recommended. Question 44. You attempt to create several managed Microsoft SQL Server instances in an Azure environment and receive a message that you must increase your Azure subscription limits. What should you do to increase the limits? This question is asking, what's the correct way to increase your Azure subscription limits when you've hit the maximum number of SQL managed instances allowed in your region? Think of it like hitting a credit limit you need to officially request more capacity from Microsoft. The options are A, create a service health alert, B, upgrade your support plan, C, modify an Azure policy, D, create a new support request. Imagine you're trying to deploy your fifth SQL managed instance, but Azure says, sorry, you've reached your limit. You can't just change a setting yourself. You need Microsoft's approval to raise that ceiling. This is like asking your bank to increase your credit limit. You submit a formal request and they review and approve it. Correct answer.
create a new support request. When you hit Azure subscription limits, like quotas for SQL managed instances, vCores, or subnets in a region, the only way to increase them is by creating a support request through the Azure portal. Here's why this is the right answer. Microsoft sets default quotas to manage resources fairly across all customers. These are called soft limits and can be increased on demand. You go to the Azure portal, select Support Troubleshooting, choose Service and Subscription Limits, Quotas, and submit your request with the new limit you need. Microsoft reviews it, usually takes one to two days, and grants the increase. Why the other options are wrong? A. Service Health Alert. This is for monitoring Azure service outages and incidents, not for increasing quotas. It won't help you get more capacity. B. Upgrade your support plan. Your support plan level doesn't control subscription limits. Even with a basic plan, you can still request quota increases. C. Modify an Azure policy. Azure policies enforce governance rules, like allowed regions or resource types, but they don't control subscription level quotas set by Microsoft. Quick takeaway, hit a limit, submit a support request. It's the official Microsoft way to get more quota. Question 45. This question requires that you evaluate the text inside to determine if it is correct. Azure Key Vault is used to store secrets for Azure Active Directory, Azure AD user accounts. Instructions, review the text inside. If it makes the statement correct, select no change is needed. If the statement is incorrect, select the answer choice that makes the statement correct. This question is testing whether you understand what Azure Key Vault is designed to store secrets for, specifically who or what uses it. The keyword here is for. It's asking who what Azure Key Vault stores secrets for, not what types of data it stores. The options are A, no change is needed. B, Azure Active Directory, Azure AD administrative accounts. C, personally identifiable information, PII. D, server applications. Think of Azure Key Vault like a secure digital safe deposit box. The question is asking, who gets to put their valuable secrets in this safe? Just like a bank vault can be accessed by account holders who have the right credentials, Azure Key Vault can be accessed by Azure AD user accounts, along with applications, to securely store and retrieve their secrets. Correct answer, A. No change is needed. The statement is correct as written. Azure Key Vault is indeed used to store secrets for Azure Active Directory, Azure AD user accounts, along with applications and services. Here's the full picture. Azure Key Vault is a cloud service that provides secure storage for secrets like passwords, API keys, connection strings, certificates, and database credentials. According to Microsoft documentation, Azure Key Vault enables Microsoft Azure applications and users to store secrets. This means both applications and Azure AD users can store and access secrets in Key Vault. When an Azure AD user account is granted the appropriate permissions, through RBAC or access policies, they can store personal secrets, retrieve application credentials, or manage sensitive configuration data through Key Vault. The authentication happens through Azure AD, and the user's identity is verified before granting access to the vault. Why the other options are wrong? B, Azure AD administrative accounts. This is too restrictive. It's not only for administrative accounts. Regular Azure AD user accounts can also access Key Vault if given proper permissions. C, personally identifiable information, PII. This is incorrect. Azure Key Vault is designed for storing secrets, passwords, keys, certificates, not general PII data like names, addresses, or social security numbers. For configuration and non-secret data, you'd use Azure App Configuration instead. D, server applications. While server applications are indeed a primary use case for Key Vault, storing app secrets, connection strings, etc., the original statement isn't wrong. Key Vault serves both user accounts and applications, so changing it to server applications would make it incomplete, not more correct. Quick takeaway Azure Key Vault equals secure secret storage for Azure AD users and applications. Think of it as a shared secure vault that both people with Azure AD accounts and apps can use to keep sensitive credentials safe. Congratulations on completing part eight. Remember, consistent practice is the key to passing AZ-900 on your first attempt. Download your free PDF study guide and mock test by commenting below. Subscribe now so you don't miss part nine and let's keep building your Azure expertise together.